Lever Brothers Company, makers of Swan, the soap with the exclusive super-creamed blend, presents... Our friend Swan. With my friend Irma. Starring Mary Wilson as Irma and Kathy Lewis as Jane. Friendship, friendship, just a perfect friendship when other friendships have been forgot. Theirs will still be hot. My friend Irma. You know, it's tough enough to be the private secretary of an important investment broker with the stock market as it is today. And it's maddening enough to go from Wall Street home to West 73rd Street on that murderous subway. But that is comparative ecstasy to what greets me when I open the door to our apartment and see my beloved roommate, Irma Peterson, standing in the room with a bottle of whiskey in her hand, pouring it on the geraniums. (laughs) So I say, Irma, why would you pour whiskey on the geraniums? And Irma said, Jane, the floor said flowers live longer if they're potted. (laughs) Normally, a remark like that from Irma is enough to make someone not only go off the wagon, but throw themselves under it. (laughs) But that's Irma for you, and I love her. Jane, you seem worried. What's the matter? Oh, everything's been so hectic down at the office with Richard away. Where'd he go, Jane? Oh, well, honey, he's gone to Nebraska on business. Oh. Uh, Jane, what shall we have for dinner tonight? A big, juicy steak or a can of sardines? (laughs) Oh, what do you think, Jane? Jane, you're not listening to me. Hmm? Oh, I'm sorry, honey. I guess my mind was in Nebraska. Well, at least you know where it is. My boss says I've lost mine. (laughs) Jane, why did Richard go to Nebraska? Well, honey, he's an investment broker, and with the market the way it is, he wants to get some first-hand information on the availability of farm machinery, you know. You see, Nebraska is the center of the wheat belt, the wheat fields, and the grain elevators. Oh, they keep the grain in elevators? No wonder the market keeps going up and down. (laughs) No, sweetie, it's, it's not that kind of an elevator. Irma, you ought to know about grain. You were born on a farm in Minnesota. Well, ours was a dairy farm. We just had cows. Jerseys and Holsteins and Guernseys. I remember I always wanted my father to buy a Swiss cow because I loved that cheese with the holes in it. (laughs) Yeah, honey. You probably wanted to keep a cow in a small bungalow so you could have cottage cheese. (laughs) Hello? Long distance? Yes. Yes, operator. This is Jane Stacy. What? Nebraska calling? Thank you. Irma, it's Richard. He's calling me from Nebraska. Nebraska? Oh, gee, what a wonderful state. The home of the Idaho potato. (laughs) Irma, please. Uh, Hello, Richard. Oh, yes. It's nice to hear your voice, too. What? Howard Teichman. Yeah. Yeah, of course I know him. He's one of your best clients. He's on his yacht, anchored in Long Island Sound, and you can't reach him. Well, what do you want me to do? Will you please get off the line? No, no, not, not you, Richard, no. It, it's the other party on my line. They're always cutting in. We, we have a party line. Yeah. Now, now what were you saying? You were what? Oh, lady, please. I'm talking long distance. I can't help it if your teeth fell down the drain. <laughs> I was on the phone first. Uh, just a second, Richard. I better write it down. Irma, get a pencil. Get a pencil. Take this down, huh? All right, Jane. Go, go ahead, Richard. Go ahead. What's that? You'll call me back at 7 o'clock tonight to tell me whether Mr. Teichman is to buy or sell farm machinery. Yeah. Oh, yes, I know how important it is, Richard. Well, don't worry, dear. I'll get to him on his yacht if I have to swim out to him and back. Oh, I sure do. I certainly miss you. No, not you, lady. <laughs> Oh, Richard, I'd better hang up. This party line's just driving me crazy. I'll be waiting for your call at 7. Bye. Oh, honestly, these party lines. I might as well try to carry on a conversation in Madison Square Garden. It is, it's really beyond endurance. 
Irma, we've got to get a private line. Well, Al says it's very hard to get a new phone today. He says they won't give you one unless you're a bookie. (laughs) Al is ridiculous. There must be some way we can get a private line. Come in. It's only me, Professor Kropotkin. (laughs) Hello, Janie and Irma, my two little rabbits. One a little Easter bunny, the other a little Bugs bunny. (laughs) Why, Professor? (laughs) Excuse me, a little joke I thought up for the coming holidays. (laughs) Uh, Girls, do you mind if I use your telephone? Not at all. I would use the payphone downstairs, but Al has put so many slugs in it that I'm afraid when I lift up the receiver, a voice will say, This is your FBI. (laughs) Well, you're welcome to use ours, Professor, but we have a party line, so there's always somebody coming, cutting in. Well, I'll take a chance. I'm calling my old friend, Eli. Oh, well, Professor, why don't you ask Miss O'Reilly to put a phone in your room? In my room, it's impossible. No wall in the entire room is strong enough to hang the box on. <laughs> oh, h- hello, Eli. This is Kropotkin. Yes, your old friend from the Milwaukee Symphony. Yeah. You're glad to hear from me? Well, it's always nice when all friends get together. Wait a minute, Eli. Lady, get off the phone. Can't you see we're talking? <laughs> so tell me, Eli, how's everything with you? Huh? Uh, hold it. Lady, please, I'm trying to talk with my old friend. Go ahead, Eli. What, lady? Just a minute. You like my voice, lady? Eli, keep still. The lady is talking. <laughs> What, lady? Well, thank you. I like your voice, too. <laughs> Eli, please get off the line. <laughs> Go ahead, lady. I think you hung up. <laughs> now, what are you saying? Tonight? I don't know. What time? Eli, is that you again? For goodness sakes, get off. This is not Eli. This is the lady's husband. Sorry, wrong number. <laughs> Jenny, you're right. These party lines are terrible. Everybody's always butting in. I know. What can I do about it? Richard's going to call me on an important business matter from Nebraska tonight at 7, and I'm just terrified that he won't be able to get through. Well, girls, if you want to get your service changed, you've got to know somebody important. Who do you know? Well, I know Al. <laughs> Irma, darling, that will change the service. Your, your, your telephone wires will be tapped. <laughs> then what can we do? Girls, these are your own problems. Me, I've got my own problems with my income tax. Yeah, living alone, you haven't any dependents. The only dependent I got is my ceiling. You put down your ceiling as a dependent? Certainly. Whenever I'm in my room, I have to support it. (laughs) Goodbye, girls. Oh, Irma, I don't know what to do. Oh, you're worried, Jane, huh? Well, certainly I'm worried, honey. If our telephone is tied up tonight, when Richard tries to call me, he may lose one of his biggest clients. Oh, don't worry, Jane. I- I'll take the receiver off the hook so nobody can use it. No, <laughs> no, Irma, no. Come in. Hello, Jane. Hiya, chicken. Hello, Al, honey. Gee, Al, are you growing a mustache? Oh, no, no. This all comes from using the slug at the automat. What do you mean, Al? Well, it was eating blackberry pie and could only get the slot half open. <laughs> Chicken, I've been trying to get you on the phone all day. Who you been talking to? I wasn't talking, Al. We're on a party line, you know. Oh, hate them party lines, Chicken. When I call you up on the phone and throw you a kiss, I want to know who's catching it. (laughs) Besides, I've been trying to get you all day to tell you about my latest deal. Oh, that's the only time I'm glad the line was busy. What is your latest brainstorm, Al? Painting numbers on piano stools and selling them for roulette wheels? (laughs) This is one Joe is backing. Must make a fortune. What is it, Al, honey? It's a man's suit designed to look like a pair of pajamas. So if the watchman catches you in a store after it's closed, you can tell him you walk in your sleep. (laughs) Gee, Jane, isn't Al dynamite? Yes, and someday someone's going to put a fuse under him and blow him right out of that unemployment line. (laughs) Well, as much as I hate to miss this priceless dialogue, I'm going to go down to the telephone company and see if I can get a private line. Goodbye, kids. Why does she want a private line? Well, our phone is always busy, and Jane is especially worried because tonight she's expecting an important business call from Richard in Nebraska. Well, chicken, she ain't got a chance to get a private phone. Why not, Al? Doesn't know the angles. When you're dealing with a big corporation, you gotta throw your weight around. Threaten them. How, Al? Chicken, if you want to know how to deal with a telephone company, 
There's only one man who can help us. Who else? Who else but... Hello, Joe. <laughs> Al, got a problem. Irma's having a little trouble with her telephone. Understand you know a couple of collectors with a company. Yeah, you know, those guys who go around taking the money out of the pay station. Huh? They don't work for the company, they work for you. <laughs> well, then, uh, Joe, uh, how did you get your phone? Uh-huh. 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 Mm-hmm. You told him you were in business. Ventilating? What do you mean? Oh, you open second-story windows. <laughs> well, the, the business angle gives me a thought. Thanks for the lead, Joe. I'll take it from there. Come on, chicken. We're off to the telephone company. Well, Miss Stacy, let me see. Now, your phone number is Hilltop 5829. Yes, that's right. Now, the telephone company understands your problem and would like to give you a private wire, but we're short of equipment. Oh, no. Of course, if it was an emergency, a case of illness... Well, you see, I live with Irma Peterson. Oh, is there anything wrong with Miss Peterson? You have no idea. <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, well, she isn't quite right. I, I mean... I know, I know. It's, it's hard to talk about things like that. Sickness is something we must all bear at one time or another. Yes. Then you'll try to help us, Mr. Ritterhoff? Certainly. We'd be delighted to do anything that would get Miss Peterson back to normal. Thank you, Mr. Ritterhoff. Goodbye. Goodbye. Well, Chicken, here we are. Telephone company. Let's go in. The man you have to see is Mr. Ritterhoff. But, Al, I, I don't know what to tell him. Oh, just tell him you're in business. But with people breaking in on your telephone line, the customers get mad and hang up. As a result, your business is dropping off. Got it? Uh, got it. Let's have it back once just to play safe. Uh, I'm in business hanging customers, but with people breaking the line, my customers drop off. Oh, hold it, Chicken. <laughs> just take your time. Come on. Yes, folks, what can I do for you? I'd like to have a private line. Mm -hmm. What's your telephone number? A Hilltop 5829. Hilltop 5829. Are you by any chance Irma Peterson? Yes, I'm Irma Peterson, and I'd like to have a private line right away, please. Do you live with Miss Jane Stacy? Yes. Why? I thought you were sick. That's ridiculous. I never felt better in my life. Oh. <laughs> you see, Mr. Ritterhoff, Miss Peterson here is in business. I see. Uh, what kind of business? A... Uh, uh, she's, um, she's a mannequin. That's right. I do impersonations. No, <laughs> What's going on here? Mr. Ritterhoff, I may not weigh much, but I'd like to throw my weight around. I beg, uh, <laughs> I beg your pardon? Either you give us a private line or we take our business elsewhere. Well, miss, that's the way you want it. The telephone company doesn't want to stand in the way of a great impersonator. You may consider your telephone disconnected as of now. The reason? Misrepresentation. Good day. Morel, didn't I tell him? Tell him? Chicken, they're taking the phone out. Now, how will Richard be able to talk to Jane at seven? Well, Al, I'm not a genius. I can't solve everybody's problems at once. <laughs> You know, ladies, you can tell Swan differs from other soaps just by feeling a cake of Swan. It feels smoother. As Susie Swan says, Swan is really different. The feel of Swan will tell you in a minute. Just feel a cake of Swan and you will see that Swan is different as can be. The reason, friend, it's super cream blend, says Susie. Yes, only Swan has this exclusive super-creamed blend, the blend that makes Swan differ from other soaps. You can feel the difference when you run your fingers over a cake of Swan. It feels smoother. You can feel the difference in Swan's lather. It's creamier, richer, more abundant. That's why Swan does an extra mild, extra thorough cleansing job on your skin. Yes, thanks to Swan's exclusive super-creamed blend, Swan lather cleanses so gently, rinses away so thoroughly, that your skin looks smoother, Fresher, younger. Remember, the swan look is a young look. Well, it's almost seven, and I'm waiting here by the phone for Richard's call from Nebraska. 
Al and Irma are both here, and I don't like the way they're acting. Especially Irma. She has that same expression she had on her face the day she sold my leopard coat for a dollar because the man told her that leopards were often known to turn on their masters. <laughs> Irma. Uh, yes, Jane? You know, you're acting very strangely. There's something wrong. Uh, no, Jane. Hmm. Why are you so silent? Uh, well, you know, Jane, um, silence is golden. Yes. And we want to save up so we can get married. <laughs> well, whatever the two of you are up to, when Richard calls, I don't want any talking. Don't worry, you won't hear a sound. Chicken! <laughs> uh, of course we'll be quiet, Jane. We realize how important this call is. Yeah, just so you know, Al. Well, I guess I'll go in the bathroom and wash up. You call me, honey, if the phone rings. Gee, Al, what shall we do? I, I wonder if they cut the phone off yet. Chicken, don't use the word phone. Jane might hear. Refer to it as, uh, uh, Louie. I'll know what you mean. All right, Al. Uh, Al, will you lift Louie's head up and see if he's still alive? <laughs> Just what I intended to do, chicken. I told you to stay off the phone. Uh, only be a second. Hello? What, Sam? You don't say. Oh, that's too bad. Goodbye. Al. <laughs> Al, how is Louie? Chicken, prepare yourself for a shock. Louie is dead. <laughs> You'll never hear his golden voice again. Oh, Al, what'll we do? Irma, who is this Louie? Uh, just an old friend. Uh, go back to your washing, Jane. Well, all right, Al, but stay off the phone now. Call me if it rings. Oh, Al, now Jane will find out the phone is disconnected. Maybe I ought to tell her. No, chicken, that phone has a long cord. She'll strangle the two of us. <laughs> Got to resort to what is known in the trade as a fast shuffle. What do you mean, Al? We'll ring the alarm clock. You grab the phone and pretend you're talking to Richard. When Jane comes out, you hang up and give her the message. Gee, Al, are, are we doing the right thing? Can't tell till we see how it turns out. But Richard is to tell Jane whether Mr. Teichman should buy or sell. What shall I say? Either one, chicken. Can't stop to become financial experts when our lives hang in the balance. Here goes the alarm clock. Hello? What was that? Uh, just the phone ringing. What? Uh, Richard? Yes, Richard. Richard, Irma, give me the phone. All right, Richard. Uh, goodbye, Richard. Irma, what's the matter with you? Why didn't you let me talk to him? Uh, he was in a hurry. It was his last nickel. <laughs> uh, but he gave me a message. Chicken, uh... Richard gave you the message for Mr. Teichman? Yes. Gee, that's strange. Well, tell me, was Mr. Teichman to buy or to sell? Yes. <laughs> yes what? Uh, yes, uh, he wants Mr. Teichman to sell. Are you positive? Of course I'm positive. Sell. S-E-L. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, if that's his message, I'd better get over to Mr. Teichman. Hand me the phone, Al. I'll call a cab. Uh, we'll do it for you, Jane. How do you like that? This darn party line is always busy. Oh, dear. Well, I'll get a cab downstairs. That party line. Thank heavens we won't have to put up with this phone much longer. You can say that again. <laughs> Well, Chicken, are you a little proud of the way I got us out of that spot? Oh, but, Al, Jane will try the phone sooner or later. Well, what can we do? But, uh, but, but maybe I can snip the cord with a pair of scissors. Then I can tell Jane the operator is cut off. No, <laughs> no, 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 Chicken. Oh, well, maybe we can hang it out of the window. Jane always wanted an extension phone. Yeah, forget it, Chicken. <laughs> we have survived the crisis. So long as Jane doesn't find out tonight... Tomorrow morning, you can apologize to the phone company and they'll restore the service and Jane will never be the wiser. Oh, Al, you're so wonderful. You put so much confidence in my mind that it makes my head feel like the Rock of Gibraltar. Oh, hello, Jane. Everything uh, taken care of? Yeah. Yeah, I saw Mr. Teichman on his yacht. Of course, he's a little surprised that Richard wants him to sell, but he's given orders to unload. He just left on an overnight cruise. Well, that takes care of that. Jane, how about going with Chicken and I to a movie tonight? On me. On you? Well, sure. Things look pretty good. You know, March is a long month. 
I get five unemployment checks. <laughs> oh, all right, Al. Come in. Excuse me for bothering you so late, girls, but I've got a terrible toothache. Oh, that's too bad, Professor. Oh, that Mrs. O'Reilly. I never should have made up with her. Tonight she had to bake me an angel cake. I think she left a harp in it. <laughs> Janie, could I please use your phone to call the dentist? Certainly. Uh, you can't talk, Professor. You've got a sore tooth. <laughs> I'll get it for you. Oh, thank you, Al. Circle 8884. Right. How do you like that? That dame is still on this party line. Oh, well, it's about time someone told her off. Hand me that phone, Al. Oh, no, Jane, uh, we'll be late for the movie. Give it to me, Al. I'll tell her... Hello? Hello? But there's no one on here. There's not even a dial sound. This phone is dead. How do you like that? The, the dame talked the life right out of it. <laughs> You're quiet, chicken. I can't understand this. Come in. Telegram for Miss Stacy. Oh, yes. Uh, I'll take it. Uh, here you are, boy. Thank you, miss. Yeah. I wonder who it's from. Hey. It's from Richard. Unable to reach you. Phone company says your phone has been disconnected since 3 o'clock. Imperative you notify Teichman to buy... To buy? Oh, Irma. Irma, Al, don't you dare move. I think I'll go to the dentist. <laughs> A sight like this I can't take without Novocaine. <laughs> Irma Peterson. Al, how could you do a thing like this to me? To Richard? To an innocent man like Mr. Teichman who will lose a fortune. Oh, we didn't mean it, Jane. You, you see, we went down to the phone company and I started to throw my weight around, but I... Didn't know it would land on you. Oh, Irma. <laughs> well, gee, it's, it's just one of those things, Jane. After all, it's, it's human nature for people to make mistakes, and Chicken and me, we're always going back to nature. <laughs> Good night, Al. Good night. Good night, Chicken. <laughs> I I'm sorry, Jane. You're always sorry. <laughs> You were sorry when you cut a hole in my coat so the moths could fly out. <laughs> you were sorry the time you put flypaper on the chair because I said I wanted Richard to stick around. <laughs> you were sorry the time you put Paris green in the candy because St. Patrick's Day was coming. <laughs> You're always sorry. Now it's too late. I'll be fired in the morning and all on account of you. Good night, Irma. Don't ever speak to me again. Good night, Jane. Good night, Jane. <laughs> She's mad at me. <laughs> Well, I'm at the office. Gotten all my things together so when Richard comes back and fires me, it won't take me long to make an exit. Although I've refused to speak to her, Irma's followed me to the office. She's sitting here looking like a cocker spaniel who's just chewed up the rug. <laughs> Jane, I'm sorry. Will you ever forgive me? Irma Peterson. Miss Stacy, where's Mr. Rhinelander? Oh, well, you, you see, Mr. Teichman, Mr. Rhinelander's in Nebraska, but, but he thought... I know that... how he thought. He outthinks everybody. Yes, but... Everybody he... bought, but he was the only one who sold. He sold. I made a fortune. You made... It was a lucky day for me when I went with the Rhinelander Investment Company. Well, I'll see him later. I'm off to trade in my yacht. Who knows? I may even negotiate for the Queen Mary. I've made a killing... Goodbye. <laughs> Irma, I'm sorry. Would you ever forgive me? Oh, certainly, Jane. All of us can't be bright. <laughs> you know something? 
Right now, I'm in no position to argue with my friend, Irma. Folks, in just a moment, I'm going to tell you the names of more big winners in the $100,000 Lieber Fur Contest. But first, I'd like to tell you why so many women prefer swan soap for their complexion care. It's because swan alone has that wonderful super-creamed blend. Why, even the way a cake of swan feels tells you that it differs from other soaps. Swan has an extra smoothness you can actually feel in the cake itself. You can feel a difference in the lather, too. Swan's lather feels richer, creamier. And Swan's super-creamed blend makes that Swan lather rinse away so completely that your skin glows with freshness and life. It's left softer, smoother, younger. No wonder the Swan look is a young look. And now the top winners in the fourth week of the Big Lever Fur Contest. First prize, Mrs. E.H. Turnick of 5721 Elwood Street, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. You win a gorgeous $3,000 mink coat or the cash. Congratulations, Mrs. Turnick. The second prize winners are Mrs. A.J. McCracken, 1216 Elm Street, Cambridge, Ohio, Mrs. Gladys Carr, Edgewater, Maryland, Mrs. Fred B. Hooper, 135 South Grove, Albany, New York. You each win a luxurious $1,000 fur coat or the cash. Nice going. The other 325 winners in the fourth week's contest will be notified by mail. Listen next week for more winners. And now, may I present Mr. McCullough St. John's managing editor of Radio Mirror and Photoplay magazines. Thank you, Mr. Bingman. As a representative of the many thousands of readers of Radio Mirror magazine who have voted my friend Irma, their favorite r r new p comedy program of 1947, I want to present these citations to Cy Howard, the creator and writer-producer-director of My Friend Irma, and to the other wonderful members of the My Friend Irma cast. Congratulations to all of you and to your sponsor, Swan Soap. Thank you very much, Mr. St. John. We are indeed happy that our friend Irma has such a loyal following. And while the thank yous are being passed around, I'd like to make a bow to the people in our cast who have worked so hard and done so much to make the program a success. My personal thanks go to Marie Wilson and Kathy Lewis, our lovely stars, to Hans Conried, John Brown, Leif Erickson, Gloria Gordon, and Lud Gluskin for his wonderful music. And a special thank you to Park Levy, my writer colleague. <laughs> Folks, next Monday evening, listen again to... Our friend, Swan, with my friend, Irma. Frank Bingman speaking. Yes, there's a reason why Spry is the cake-making wonder. Spry has an amazing cake improver secret. Try the Spry one bowl way and be certain of lighter, finer, richer cakes every time. No other type of shortening has Spry's cake improver. For new cake-making success, rely on Spry, the pure all-vegetable shortening. Rely on Spry, S-P-R-Y. Rely on Spry, S-P-R-Y. <laughs> My Friend Irma, presented by Swan, another fine product of Lieber Brothers Company, was produced and directed by Cy Howard. Tonight's script was written by Cy Howard and Park Levy. Tune in next week one hour earlier and listen to the Lux Radio Theater, immediately followed by My Friend Irma. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.